In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can test your own amplifier. This model here is an amplifier I've just purchased myself with my own money. I have no idea if this thing even works or not, so this is a perfect candidate for me to show you how I do my own testing. Now, what this is, is a Memphis, it's an M-Class, it's a four-channel model. It's an MCA 3004, and right over here, I'm going to test all these inputs, all the crossover filters, the bandpass filters, the power output stages, of course. And I'm also going to test to make sure everything else functions properly, that it works in parallel and bridge modes, all the LEDs function, diagnostics, the works. So let's get to it, shall we? Just for the sake of things, I'm going to assume that you're at home or at your business or your shop doing this test. So you're going to have access to all your tools. And if you watch me and if you've seen me before, you know me, I'm all about the five P's, which are proper preparation prevents before poor performance. Before I get started, that, I would also suggest before you get started to take a quick look at your amplifier and make sure you're going to have all the tools you're going to need to um, check it out properly. On mine, I have machine thread screws, which I'm not going to even open them up because it's not that serious. I'm just doing a quick, you know, test. And all these have a little bit of space, so I have a little wiggle room. I could just jam my wires in there tentatively to get my... Uh, Connection is made on this side, so that's good enough for that side. On this side, however, you're going to see that I have a pair of RCAs for my front and rear channels, which I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a second. Over here, I have my level settings, which I'm going to use a small slot head screwdriver for all these, as well as my crossover, because this here is a four channel, can do low pass filter, um, just in and out, you know, so it's no crossover whatsoever and I can also set it for high pass filter and I'm going to check all three of those settings on both sides of the channels. That's important to do because we want to make sure that that's working on this guy. As far as my audio is concerned, I'm using my iPhone and on all iPhones and most Android phones they all have this 3.5 millimeter jack which is going to go here and on the other end it's just a pair of RCEs so that's going to feed my audio into my amp like so for front and rear channels. I also I'm using this here regular speaker. It's just a regular old 4-ohm speaker. It doesn't matter what you have lying around, whether it's 4-ohm, 2-ohm, 8-ohm, whatever it is, it'll do just fine. And I'm also going to use this Pyramid 12-amp power supply, which has built-in, you know, protection and stuff like that. So if, I, if the amplifier is faulty or if it has a dead short, it won't blow up my power supply. So that's pretty much it. I mean, but if you're in a pinch, a car battery or something as simpli simplistic as that will work. It doesn't have to be as fancy as what I have set up here. Not to say that this is fancy, but it'll work. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to power in, put in the power wires. And how I'm doing that is just sticking them in there. On mine, 12 volt plus, that's of course your constant 12 volts. And I have this small jumper wire, which I'm going to use to actually tie into my main power. Just stick that shucker right in there. I'm going to double this wire up because these holes are a little bit large. My, my amplifier says REM for remote. Yours might say plus turn on or remote. You know, depending on your model. Then, of course, your ground. You can see my red light came on, which was my diagnostics. Green came on. Diagnostics went out. So, so far, we're, we're looking good. That's a good sign. Now, also on my amplifier, I have four channels and I have... Four sets of parallel outputs. I have my, my front left, my front right, rear left, rear right, and I also have a bridged output. So I'm going to also be testing those as well. Moving on to the other side, I got my phone. And I, you, know, you can see I got sound coming out from the speaker on the phone. Once I plug in this 3.5 mil, that sound's going to go out because it's feeding through the RCAs now. So I'm going to feed that into my rear channel. Real quick, I'm just going to back this out real quick so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so phone's on, it's playing. The level we don't need pinned. It's funny, however, when, whenever you purchase an amplifier, it's always maxed out, isn't it? Always the way. So I'm going to take my test speaker. There's my left, my right, and I'm going to do the bridge, which is left positive, right negative. It's marked on this amplifier, but that's pretty much standard on most amps. 
which gives you the summed output of both channels together. That's how that works. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. But left parallel, right parallel output, left positive and right negative. You can see that the, the sound was doubled when I did that. So that's all good for my rear channel. Actually, oops, I'm messing up. Turn the volume down a little bit. Okay. You're going to want to test your crossovers and make sure there's no scratchiness on your gain. That's important because you could be hitting bumps while you listen to your sound system. And that could drive you literally insane. So over here, it's on high pass filter. Flat. Now I noticed that there was much more low end and it sounded more full, so I know that that's gonna work. Low pass filter, which is just all your super subsonic low frequencies. I can see that this is working very well. Put it back to full. High pass. You can see that that's working. Now, of course, I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other channels. I don't have to shit here, shoot the whole video over, you know, explaining how that's done because you've just seen how I've done it. And there you go. That's how it's done. I mean, if you really want to get fancy, you can take a, um, you know, a multimeter and you can mess around with, with different voltages. You could test your AC inputs and outputs and, you know, output stages. But this is just a simple video just to test an amplifier. Uh, real straightforward, like. But that's how it's done.